How is everyone doing? Looks like we got some more modern coming up here. We have Nigel on the right. He's on the play playing Blue Red Blitz. His opponent George on the left is playing Band Ephemerate. Now, Ephemerate is usually a deck that kind of needs some time to, to set up, do its thing. And Blitz would love for the opponent to just sit there do nothing for a couple turns. Now, should George get like a, a Soul Herder engine going with some form of life gain, then that could be quite scary. Uh, looks like he... <laughs> It looks like Nigel's not going to give George the time to actually set up much of anything here. That's a, that's a pretty aggressive opening right there. Good lord. Now, we've had Nigel a couple times on the channel already. Usually those games are pretty fast. I hope it's not going to be too fast today because I kind of want to have something to talk about but <laughs> we'll have to wait and see here uh, turn to Teferi coming out from George that's usually pretty good but against two monastery swift spears that's probably not going to be the most relevant thing to be doing here it's gonna draw a card Nigel sitting on a bunch of cards as well. It's, uh, this, this might be a fast one. Nigel still has a lot of cards in hand. Can't quite tell what he had. I think his, his draw there was mutagenic growth. <laughs> if that's a mutagenic growth, this is going to be a very fast game. That's, that's a lightning bolt. Gonna swing in for four, Mutagenic Grove, six, and then two prowess triggers is eight. So one more spell. I'm gonna do it, but doesn't look like Nigel has it. No, his, his last card is another, another uh, Fiery Eyelid, and of course Soulscar Mace that got bounced. I think George here gonna go to one or maybe not Did I miscount I probably miscounted it we're going to game two game two it looks like George is on a mulligan to six uh, as is Nigel so all's fair now what can we expect from the sideboard here George I would expect not that much I really think he's going to have to lean on Knight of Autumn and maybe try and get some ephemerate value from that. Uh, that's that's not going to be the easiest thing when your opponent is playing a bunch of spot removal. Uh, now from Nigel's side, yeah, it's, it's not much better, I think. Uh, he could think about bringing in uh, maybe some more spot removal, some abrades could be what he's looking for. Let's see a quick, uh, a quick coiling oracle coming out from George here. Unfortunately, doesn't flip a land. We have Dragon's Rage Chandler coming out from Nigel here. That that might actually be good for George here. Uh, Dragon's Rage Chandler needs some time to to set up, so it looks like Nigel here has a a, a little bit of a slower hand. Also, no Mishra's Bobble yet, so yeah, that Darcy is is not attacking for three anytime soon. George attacking Nigel down to 16, I believe. Uh, 
Let me let me re make the screen a bit bigger. We have Wall of Omens coming out from George. Seventeen. Wait, is the calling oracle a one one or a two two? The one one. That's what's happening here. All right. That explains a lot. Oh, I could have sworn it was a 2-2. I, I guess that makes sense. That's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, we have Fiery Eyelet and a Soulscar Mage coming out from Nigel here. Uh, but yeah, that Wall of Omens is going to be a, a, a pretty decent way for George to keep himself alive. Ice Fang Quaddle not coming down. Yeah, this this is what happens when you give the Ephemerate deck the time to to set up, and this is potentially looking very dangerous for Nigel here. He's pretty much lost all of his speed, so gonna gonna come in for two here, down to fifteen. Like it's not fast, but it doesn't have to be fast. It's it's Soul Herder. You can just sit there and and grind someone down, and if, if Nigel isn't fast enough, now I do see a, a a bobble in hand. Maybe he's just holding off on it. That's a lava dart, but no mounts on the field yet. I I can't quite see if he has one in hand. I would imagine so. Like there's so many mountains in that deck. If you're holding a land, it's probably a mountain, or it's a spire bluff canal. And if you're holding three spire bluff canals, that's that's rough. That is rough. But we do see the fire island coming out. We see the bubble coming out. Gonna get a a quick surveil going off here. Chooses to bin the monastery swift spear. Lava dart. The noble high arc. Again, surveil. And this, this right here, pretty much shows the power of, of Darcy, of Dragon Rage Channeler. Just being able to just fix your next couple draws, enable Delirium pretty fast, and yeah, sucking the bubble, and, and that's a three-three flyer already. Now uh, there's also two prowess triggers on the Soulscar Mage, so that's going to be a a swing for Nigel here. Looks like the second surveil Nigel decided to keep the card on top, still holding another fiery eyelet. The third fiery eyelet, he's holding an expressive iteration and what is that third card? Not sure. Looks like George is gonna fetch shock in response. He's probably looking for white then. Yeah. Hello Fountain gonna come out. I'm I'm guessing this is gonna be Path to Exile. I wanna know why else you'd do this. And then takes the my miss I probably missed something. I'm gonna trust the players here. Ah, uh, it's gonna flash in a quaddle. It's still lacking a snow permanent. Does George not have Oh no wait! The quaddles see each other. Of course, of course. I mean there's still an argument to be made here for fetching uh a a second snow covered island if George is playing that, but yeah no, he does have death touch and is gonna be able to block the Dragon's Rage Chandler. 
The wall, of course, is going to block the Soulscar Mage quite handily. Uh, draw off the bubble for Nigel, and draw for the turn for George. Now, George just needs to find a payoff. Calling Oracle is going to find a Noble Hierarch that's not really the payoff he's looking for. Like a, a soul herder here would pretty much close the deal. Would be fantastic. But let's see. Noble gonna come down. Gonna attack here for two again. Now, Dirch is not out of the woods yet, but I think he's definitely favored here. Right? Like, he, he has to be, pretty much. Oh, excuse me. Uh, that's an expressive iteration for Nigel. He's going to exile a Scalding Tarn. So Nigel now has his mountain to sacrifice to a potential Lava Dart. Now he, he could consider... Uh, let's see, his best targets are Noble Hierarch and Ice Fang Quaddle. I think... But it, it, it's tough because the Ice Fang Quaddle isn't actually doing anything now. No, wait. I, I'm being an idiot. There's a, a Prismatic Vista. The Ice Fang Quaddle has Death Touch uh, by by any other name, pretty much. That is a. I think that's Stormway Entity. It's a card we haven't seen in a while, but is still. Still a pretty good card. Yeah, there's a Stormwing Entity. Yeah. So, if you've cast an instant sorcery this turn, it's a 2-mana 3-3. Three, three. Uh, it has flying prowess, and you scry 2 when it enters the battlefield. Just a, a, a fast reminder of what it does. It does a lot. Like, one of those, those more recent cards. Feels like the past... Four-ish years, cards have gotten more and more text, but ma maybe that's me. I mean, for me, it's not that bad. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Cards there have, have like, books written on them <laughs> uh, to make everything work. Like, that game needs keywords. That's all I'm going to say. If, if Trample takes... Like two sentences, uh, two two lines of text, then you need keywords in your game. Absolutely. Path to Exile coming out, gonna get rid of the Soulscar Mage. Interesting. I would have guessed George go for the storming entity but maybe he's scared of of just damage sticking oh he's he's gonna be able to do both with the eternal witness okay eternal witness is another piece of george's ephemerate puzzle here like all george needs now is a way of of, of blinking his creatures if he finds that then we're we probably go to game three. The fact that two thirds of this video so far has been game two leads me to believe that game two is probably gonna go to George here, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> gonna swing in for three. Nigel down to eight. Nigel is definitely gonna have to do something here. He does have another blue card? I think that's Murktide region. Gonna sec the eyelid. Draw another card. I think his deck is upside down. <laughs> gonna draw another fiery eyelid. Is gonna sec that one as well. Oh, yeah. 
and what I wouldn't do for a a Niv Mizzet Perunum field right now. Is so Nigel choosing to get rid of the Noble Hierarch? I mean, you're not doing it for the mana. Okay, you're doing for doing it for the mana. <laughs> I I shouldn't have opened my mouth. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, so George now has no white. Uh, that that's potentially a problem, but it's still George who's attacking here. Nigel is now down to three, and. Down to two. This is a problem. Yeah, I... I think in this position... there There's a possibility that Nigel should have gone for the witness. Just... Like, George is doing more damage attacking wide instead of tall. So the Noble Hierarch on that front isn't really doing anything. Uh, the Blood Moon at this point isn't really doing anything either except keeping George off white, but the thing killing you right now is already on the field, so yeah, no, that's that's not gonna do it, and we're going to game three. Though, to be fair to Nigel, I think that game was pretty much over anyway. It, it just took too long to actually get something going, and then you're giving George too much time to have some sort of response. Now for game three, we have both players keeping their seven. Nigel is on the play. Instantly coming in with Monster Swiss Spear. George playing Medic Vista and passing. We have Steam Vents into Express Federation for Nigel here. Metamorphose, I think that was a Lava Dart and a Steam Vents. Yeah, interesting. And yeah, the, definitely a Lava Dart. Unfortunately, the Steam Vents is um, right uh, yeah the oh it wasn't a steam fence it was an arid mesa but nigel already played his land for the turn so it's getting exiled that's fine we get snuggle for planes from george here and he takes the hit from Monastery Swiss Bear, so he's at 16. And that's a, a very unfortunate second snow covered planes. Sanctifier and Vec coming out. And Vec on Vec? Uh, I don't know. It's Sanctifier being played here. Uh, now, this is one of the new Modern Horizons 2 cards. It has. Protection from black and from red. It, uh, it's a 2-2 human cleric. Also very relevant. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile all cards that are black or red from all graveyards. And if a black or red permanent spell or card not on the battlefield would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. So pretty much any color that George is not playing will instantly get exiled. And that's how that works. Like a like a rest in peace on a creature that only works if the card is either black or red. Right? I, I, I think that's that's the best way to read it. Like the wording on the card is, is really weird. Really strange. Uh, now, unfortunately, 
the prowess trigger of Bobble here isn't really going to do much because, yeah, there's, there's a pretty good blocker there. We have Misty being cracked here. A snow covered forest. Looks like George is absolutely determined to play around Blood Moon this game. Fair enough. Especially like a, a natural turn three Blood Moon would have been incredibly scary here. But it looks like we're not going to get that. I mean, if Nigel had the turn three Blood Moon, George would have had two planes and a bunch of mountains. Let's be honest here. <laughs> So, is going to shoot George in order to play the Stormwing Entity. And I think past the turn. Yeah. Okay, so George has all his colors. No need to play around Blood Moon anymore. Could maybe get a, a second force if he really needed it. Uh, Soul Herder coming out. Soul Herder, unfortunately. Uh, uh, no, I mean, Sanctifier, unfortunately, doesn't have protection from blue, so isn't able to attack. Uh, but is going to get blinked, and Soul Herder is going up. Now, Nigel is going to have to make this, this Storming Entity do some amount of work here fortunately lightning bolt on the soul herder is potentially a, a bunch of work interesting that nigel decided to go for the soul herder instead of face he could have put george to Five, that probably means he doesn't have another lightning bolt. Because if he did... Ooh, that's rough. Wait. Is he evoking it? Did, did he... Did he exile... The Eternal Witness to evoke... Oh, yeah, yeah, because... Of course, it's ephemerate. <laughs> And then Nigel's going to bolt and laugh at Dart the, the endurance in response. That's oof. That is. I mean, it works. It definitely works. And thanks to all the prowess triggers, it definitely works quite well. But, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, Actually, now I think about it, it's it's two cards from Nigel to to basically get rid of three cards for George. Yeah, that's that's hella worth what I'm talking about. That's that's incredible. <laughs> that's exactly what you want. Because George exiled the Eternal Witness of the Endurance, so that's that's the Witness, the Endurance. And the ephemerate gone for the price of giving your flyer plus two plus two for the turn. Yeah, no, no, that's 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 great. That's great. Yeah, maybe maybe a bit of an over exaggeration, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. If another eternal witness coming out, it's gonna get ephemerate back. That is potentially very scary. But then again, Nigel right now is firmly in the driver's seat with a, a massive flyer. Doesn't have the quick burn spell to finish this. Oh, that Sanctifier wasn't on the field right now. Then this, this would have been game right now. Uh, Kozilek's return. 
I, I I need to look that one up real fast. Oh yeah, three mana instant deals two damage to each creature. But even though it costs red mana, it has the void, so the sanctifier dies. George's draw was not good enough to get him out of this, and round one is going to go to Nigel.